went through the Fodder Rape, the Outwintering and the Reseeding in 2021 and this is what we have here now. Hello and welcome to Sullivan's Farm. Somebody asked in a comment on the last video about the Fodder Rape here and that prompted me to sit down, go through the numbers myself and the dates and the times and the pros and the cons and all that stuff. So that's what I'm going to cover in this video. So this is what the crop looks like now. There's the field it was in last year. This is the other side of the field and it's a very even crop. It's grown on well so far this year, but it's not as straightforward as that either. So uh, we'll have a look at it. There's a couple of patches like this or well, one patch like this really just inside the gate, which doesn't bother me. It's just where we didn't get the seed kind of right down into this area, but it's grand. For the most part, it's very, very even. I guess the first thing to say is I'm just going to talk about what works here and the numbers here. And this is in no way a promotion of fodder rape or kale or our interval or gorilla or whatever you want to call it. One bit of advice for me, don't ever believe the hype. If somebody's selling you something, you have to make sure it's going to work for you on your farm. So if you're reading in the media about some industry expert or the latest research says this, that or the other, you need to sit down and see where that research took place and how that relates to your farm. So in terms of the infrastructure, the soil type, the amount of time you have and a hundred other things. So I'm not promoting this in any way, shape or form. I'm just going to go through the numbers and see what works and what doesn't work for me. The field where the fodder rape is has a few of these and a few of these and there were a good few of these. I guess for me that was the first thing. I wanted to reseed the field where I set the fodder rape. The first stage then was to take two cuts of silage off the field because that removed a lot of the weed seeds and I left the silage bales out here rather than throwing them into the air and then drawing them out again. The second cut of silage then came off around the middle of July and then I waited two or three weeks for the grass and the weeds to come back so that when the spray, the roundup was applied, it got a good kill. Um, I didn't do that before in a previous field. I got it sprayed as soon as the grass was cut and sure, all it did was kill every little bit of grass that was there and give the weeds and the thistles a right chance. But look, you live and learn. But after you spray it off then, you have to wait 14 days for the spray to work and then you can come along with your fodder rapeseed and start setting that. It's about three and a half acres here in fodder rape at the moment. So I'm going to try to give you the costs on a per acre basis. Uh, bearing in mind the costs might be a bit lower if you were doing a bigger area. The first cost was the spray. It worked out at 50 euro per acre and then I had to pay a man to spray it off and that worked at about, out at about 20 euro per acre. So that's 70 euro per acre straight away. The seed then, the seed is relatively cheap. I think it was 35 euro for a 5 kg bag of interval and I set it at a rate of five, one bag to the acre. So that was 35 euro per acre for that. And then you have to pay the contractor, mind the little sound thing there. Then you have to pay the contractor to set that as well. I think that was a little bit more expensive. I think if I have it written down here, I think that was in around 35 euro per acre for the contractor. So that was 35. So that's about 70 euro per acre to get the seed into the ground. So now we're into mid-August and the seed is in the ground. Uh, they are the costs. Uh, they start ramping up quickly. And then I spread fertilizer on it after that. So that was, I spread 24, two and a half, 10. I know a couple of people at the time advised me and I did. I looked into getting 18612 in a big bag because I couldn't get a ton of it in the small bags and, and all that kind of stuff. But I ended up going with just 24, two and a half, 10. I spread it myself and I suppose like all the industry tell me your own time is free. So there was no contractor charge there, but the three bags of fertilizer, I think that they work out at 25 euro a bag. It was about 500 euro a ton. So that was roughly 75 euro an acre, 70, yeah, 75 euro an acre for the fertilizer. Where are we at then cost wise? So I had to write it down here and we started with the 50 euro 
And again, this is all per acre. So 50 euro for the spray, 35 euro for the seed, and 75 euro for the fertilizer. So that's 160 euro. You must pay the contractor then, unless you have a sprayer and the seed drill yourself. So that was 20 euro for the spraying, 35 roughly for setting the seed, and that's 55. So now we're at 160 for the materials, the seed, the spray and the fertilizer, and 55 for the contractor, and that gives us 215 euro to get your fodder rape in established and the fertilizer spread. So now you're ready to rock. Now you can put store cattle out on it, apparently as well. But I've only ever put Wainlands out on it here. So again, I had to go through the numbers. I am going to be keeping about 25 Wainlands on three and a half acres for four months. I'm factoring in the 1st of November until pretty much the 1st of March. Now, it won't, they won't be on it that long, but that's, I suppose, the, the stress test of it. The cubes and the silage, I'm, I'm saying that'll be roughly the same. It might be a little bit different, but ballpark, it'll be roughly the same as if they were inside in a shed. The Wainlands have to be hardy, in my view. I, I wouldn't put small ones out there. I weighed them there last week, we might cover that in the next video, and I'm happy that all of them could go out on it. The lightest Wainland there, I think she was a heifer, she was 170 kgs. I, I, I wouldn't let them out if they were any smaller than that, but equally, they need enough room outside as well. So you need enough trucks to give them the cubes in, and they need enough space around their own feeder as well. Like uh, you couldn't put 40 or 50 of them out there and give them one round feeder. I'll give them one round feeder and there'll be about 25 out there. So now, it's the 1st of November. Ireland are after winning the Rugby World Cup and our Wainlands are ready to go out onto the fodder rape and I'll be carrying out this round feeder to move around from bale to bale to bale. You've seen me at that crack before. And And shifting the fence and that's the big thing I suppose I, I can't say the word muck enough you have to shift the fence every day for four months and it's mucky moving their own feeder is mucky carrying the cubes out to them even if the, the cubes in a little meal bin beside them that's mucky so if you don't like muck then maybe it's not for you so now we'll fast forward to the first of March the Wainlands are gone out they're absolutely flying in fairness being out winter does a job on them. We'll, we'll get to the, the benefits of it there now in a second. But because part of the plan is to reseed the ground, what I will be doing then is waiting a couple of weeks again for a bit of dry weather as we had to last year, get it sprayed again, then wait for your 14 days and then get the man in with the power harrow this time. You're just going through the same process again with a different type of seed and you're power harrowing it in advance as well to give the grass seed a better chance. Seeing as I'm passing, I'll show you this. This is the next slice that will be set into fodder rape later on next summer. We'll take a couple of cuts of silage off it here, get off some of the weeds again and go through the process again then. And hopefully, the plan anyway, is that the, that will be my last winter for a couple of years out winter in Wainlands. Now, go back to my scrap of paper again. <laughs> so some of the costs are going to be the same, but this time around you have to pay for the power harrowing and the grass seed is more expensive than the fodder rape seed. So the grass seed per acre is about 90 euro, including the extra clover that I put in and the sprain is the same, so that's 50 plus 75, we'll say roughly for the fertilizer again. So this time you're up to 215, so it's 50 for the spraying, 90 for the grass seed and 75 roughly for the fertilizer again. Contractor this time is a little bit more. You have to pay the same man to spray it. So that's 20 euro, 50 to set the, 50 for the power, sorry, 50 for the power harrow and roughly. And again, 35 to set the grass seed. Um, so you're up to 105 overall. So now the cost to receive the ground is about 350 euro. These are all ballpark figures. Contractors might be dearer, or cheaper where you're from. Seed might be dearer or cheaper where you're from. 
but these are roughly the ballpark figures 350 euro per acre to reseed the ground as far as i remember the reseeding didn't happen as quick as um, any of us would have liked this year and i think it was into july before the grass seed was eventually put in between march and april coming very wet and then there was a bit of a drought in june so all these things delayed it and it was july before the grass seed was set and now i suppose the bottom line is that we'll have a look at the grass in a second but the bottom line is that it'll have had four grazings since then and the only fertilizer it got was the first fertilizer after the grass seed went in so whatever three bags to the acre of, of 24 two and a half ten this is the the field the ground where the butter ape was last year happy enough with it overall it's a little bit soft underfoot and we'll get to one of the downsides of reseeding and fodder ape in a minute but it's been grazed fairly well so far even in the rain now you can see the clover starting to come through as well even though we're moving into the autumn of the year it does need to be grazed off fairly tight so that the clover gets a chance to to come through we're starting to see some of the benefits of it just a final word on the costs between the fodder rape being set and sown and the fertilizer and all that side of it it was 215 euro per acre and then about 350 per acre to reseed it after that so you're talking north of 500 euro maybe not far off 600 euro per acre to to do the work so what's the point what's the <laughs> what are the benefits of it when you see stuff like this in your receded field you're kind of wondering is it worth it at all but i think it is you can see where it was grazed say under the the wire i have here it was grazed a little bit tighter and not stood on the clover is already starting to come through fairly well and that's one of the first benefits that I'm looking for. I guess the fodder ape has a couple of benefits. It's apparently good for the structure of the soil and it does a good job on the cattle. They're healthier when they're out wintered. You're not putting them inside into a shade with a, <laughs> and the shade could have cost you 30, 40,000 euro for a three span slatted unit. And then you don't have a whole load of slurry inside in a pit or in a tank i should say that you have to pay another contractor to draw out and spread on the land the fodder ape is grazed on site the poop stays outside the poop never goes into the shade it comes out of the animal and stays in the field so that's saving a bit of a job and as well that's better for the soil the downsides i suppose besides the cost are when you're reseeding the ground then it's bare and as you saw with that patch of ground that i just showed you there it tends to not soak the water so after all the rain we've had this is a very dry field free draining good soil all that stuff but there's patches of it bare now in the corner say where the cattle would have been standing on wet days in all that rain which i've never seen here before so having the soil uncovered definitely has a downside it'll recover and we'll get over it but it is just something you need to watch out for or be prepared for it. There's not much you can do about it. Another downside, as far as I'm concerned, is the hassle of it all. Organising the various contractors, going and buying the seed, worrying about the weather, all those things, following up with lads, trying to get them to answer the phone and all. There is a bit of hassle involved. So factor that into. There's a bit of an example of it there, something that would have never been seen in this field before. But because the soil was exposed there was no plants to help absorb the grass there's a little bit of this so yeah why why bother with the hassle and the cost of it and the outwinter and the stock and the shift in the fence and the muck well it's part of the overall plan to reduce fertilizer use here I think the fodder rape and the outwintering of the cattle gives the soil a good start when you're reseeding the ground the extra clover going in is part of that plan and I wouldn't rule out broadcasting a bit of multi-species sward seeds here next year as well and overall you're just moving away from a field that had lots of docks and nettles and a load of that old dead yellowy kind of material at the base of the sward to something that's kind of self-sufficient and doesn't need an awful lot of fertilizer now without getting too maudlin about my time passing and all that kind of carry on you do want to put your own mark 
on the place as well. You, you kind of want to take a bit of responsibility for it. And when you put your own hard cash on the line, then you tend to pay attention an awful lot more. And you want to get a return on your five, 600 euro per acre. So there's no question that has to be part of it as well. Now, it's grand to talk about legacy and all that good stuff and doing the right thing, but that's not going to pay the bills for us now. What is going to pay the bills for us now though, is this field, the near knock, that went through the fodder rape, the outwintering and the reseeding in 2021. And this is what we have here now. And the clover is, is easing back a little bit now that we're into the autumn of the year and the weather's getting colder. But there's still a world of it, thankfully. And I would say I need to check the numbers, but I would be estimating anyway, I spread maybe half the fertilizer down here, half the nitrogen down here that I've spread in some of the other more old, some of the other older permanent pasture. Now, I don't sell grass either. No, very few lads do, unless you're selling a few bales of silage or something. So grass doesn't pay or clover doesn't pay either directly, but these animals do. And see how she'd look in a two foot six centre parlour in a 18 months time maybe. If we end up going down that route, these are the ones that pay the bills. Uh, as well as the few Angus, ca Angus bull calves that are around there as well. So ultimately, whatever you're doing, it's what's going out the gate that is paying the bills for you. And if we can reduce the fertilizer bill and improve the soil and all that stuff, that'll be a big help as well. That's it for this video then. One cost to finish on that I didn't include, um, because you don't have to if the pH of the soil is right, but lime is another thing you need to apply, usually just before you set the grass seed to help bring up the pH a little bit. At the moment, a ton of lime is between 25 and 30 euro a ton spread. So if you're applying two or maybe three ton of lime per acre, you can add on 60, 70 euro per acre to your costs as well there. Thanks a million for watching. If you've any questions or any ideas or stuff that I missed or there's some place where I can save a few quid, throw it into the comments section below. We'll talk to you soon. Mind yourselves.